Good morning, it's Liverpool Transfer Daily here on the Blood Red Channel. I'm Guy Clark and joining me, Liverpool.com writer Ben Botchak. Ben, we've got plenty to talk about the final few days of the transfer window coming up. We're going to talk about Conrad Lima. We're going to talk about Sepp Vandenberg as well. But before we even get into the transfer dealings in the Liverpool business, I want to get your reaction to the first Premier League sacking of the season. Scott Parker, fresh from being dispatched 9-0 at Anfield, has been given his marching orders at Bournemouth. Yeah, it feels like strange timing. I mean, surely if you're going to be sacked, you're going to be sacked the day after, not um, a few days later. Um, it feels very early on and very harsh. I mean, he hasn't had the greatest of starts, but he's had a very difficult start. That the, the board haven't really backed him in terms of transfers. He he, he got them promoted in the first place. It, it feels like um, yeah, a bit premature and a bit unfair on Parker I mean yes Bournemouth were pretty much non-existent in that Liverpool game but um, at the end of the day he struggled with injuries as well uh, Dominic Solanke obviously who, who was their top goal scorer in the league last season he's he hasn't really been available uh, only made the bench against Liverpool as well it, it just doesn't I don't know I feel like it's a bit harsh yeah, well, he is the, the first Premier League manager to be sacked and maybe part of it being his post-match press conference thoughts, which are available on the channel if you want to watch them back. He, he was kind of refusing to rule out the fact Bournemouth might be on the, the, the reverse end of another scoreline, such as what they were at Anfield. Again, if they didn't have any backing or, or more signings come through the door and Bournemouth releasing their statement this morning and confirming that he is the first manager in the Premier League this season to to be given his marching orders and I believe the first Premier League manager to be sacked in August since 2004 when Sir Bobby Robson left Newcastle United. But let's move on, Ben. Let's talk about transfers and Conrad Lima, the first one to talk about today. People get involved with your comments and questions in the chat box and right on cue, got a question. What sort of midfielder is Lima anyway? What are your thoughts on the, the rumours, Ben, and, and what would he bring? He's a decent player, there's, there's no denying that. Um, in terms of what sort of player is he, he's someone who brings a lot of energy, so definitely going to suit the gig and pressing style that Jurgen Klopp likes. Um, but he he's also a, a technical player, he's good on the ball, he's good at progressing the ball and bringing it forward. Maybe not quite as good as Thiago, but I mean, who is in world football? Um, he He's similar to Henderson, I think people compare him to Milner. Uh, because he's played wing back a few times, but he's never actually played as a fullback like Milner has. Uh, I think he, he's more similar to Henderson in his style of play. He can get a few goals. Uh, he had a bit of a purple patch last season, uh, towards the end of last season, where he scored, I think, four in a row um, and, and in the Bundesliga. And I, I think he is, he's, he's, a, he's a decent player. He's, uh, he's someone who would, for the kind of fee that he's available... Right now, uh, he, he would be a solid signing. Uh, but I think for me, the, the concern is that with the injury record, um, it's not too dissimilar to Navigator. And uh, if, if Liverpool are looking at someone who is going to be available and who's going to be, uh, you know, kind of ridding them of their injury problems this season, then I don't think Conrad Lima is necessarily, necessarily the right option. Yeah, definitely. Got a few people getting in touch. Em says he's got a great first touch and passing, good ball recovery too. He would fit in to Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Much what you were saying there, Ben, about suiting Gagan pressing. Kumar's got in touch. Says he's good enough on a fair price. Twenty million euros would be a good deal. And I mean, he is a player who, what is in the last year of his contract, by Munich were heavily linked with him early part of the summer, but. RB Leipzig not wanting to potentially do business with a, a direct rival within the Bundesliga. So perhaps, I suppose, when you, when you put everything into the melting pot, there may be a chance Liverpool do actually explore this one. Yeah, there is a, always a possibility. Like I said, even with his injury record for the kind of price that he's being touted around for him, he's uh, a low-risk option even then. Uh, and I think uh, Liverpool obviously have good links with Red Bull and they bought a few players from the Red Bull clubs in the past, uh, even last summer. Uh, so it's a possibility and I think it, it could happen and I wouldn't complain if he was the midfielder edition. 
Yeah, Kumar's also said Ruben Neves would be an ideal signing. He can succeed Thiago in our team. I mean, there, there were links to Ruben Neves over the course of the weekend. What What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, we spoke about him yesterday in, 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 in the Transfer Daily stream. Um, as, I, as I'm going to repeat myself, he, I think he's a good player. Uh, again, the, the, the price tag is the issue there. Uh, Wolves would demand uh, an extortionate fee, I think, uh, given that it's the last few days of the window, and uh, therefore I think Liverpool are, unlike, are unlikely to to make that move. Yeah, definitely. Right, let's move on to talking about Sepp Vandenberg. Then there's been a links with a number of, of clubs in England in the Championship in particular over whether he could move on loan. Burnley were linked, Blackburn Rovers were linked as well. But it looks as though a move to the Bundesliga or into to, to Germany, to Schalke could be happening. I think that's a solid deal. I think moving back to the Championship would have felt a bit like stagnation you know he's already been there he's already proven himself uh so now he needs to step up and the Bundesliga is definitely a step up uh and it's you know Schalke have gotten rid of one defender in Malik Tio who's it was actually linked with Liverpool in the past but now he's gone to AC Milan um and I think Vandenberg comes in and uh I think he has a good chance of playing regular football there and, and starting regularly it seems Schalke like him a lot um, they 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 made a sort of late desperate attempt to sign him. He was Blackburn bound almost um, before Schalke came in and uh, took took him away from uh, England essentially. And I think it's the kind of move that could make or break his career. Uh, he he's twenty. Is is at that? He's still at a very young age, especially for a defender, for a centre back who. They don't tend to mature until later. I mean, like around the same age, Van Dyke was still playing for Groningen. Uh, so he's still got plenty of time to improve and develop. And uh, Schalke is a good place for him to do that. I was going to say, when you when you look at it, he obviously came in in the same summer as Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott had a, a loan spell to the championship, but for the last two seasons now has been in and around Jurgen Klopp's first team. It's not quite been the same for Vandenberg, but maybe that, understanding that for a defender, maybe they will mature later into their career. I saw an awful lot of his development during his time at Preston North End and can only really echo what you said. I think he's I think he's done the championship. I think what the championship offers to him, he has proven himself at that level. And actually, I think a move to the continent will will be a good move for him. Whether or not Schalke is specifically going to be the right fit for him, I, I suppose only time will tell. But very interested to see how that one goes for him and hopefully his development can continue. Right, we're going to get into your comments and questions now for the second half of the show. And first one up, Ben says, who would be your ideal signing that Liverpool could still make in this transfer window? Well, for me, I think Cuadro Kone. Um, obviously, he's, he was linked a bit tentatively yesterday uh, with a move to Liverpool. It seems like Borussia Mönchengladbach and Gladbach are going to sign a midfielder uh, in, in the last few days of the window. So it seems like it could happen. And he's a midfielder who I think um, is more similar to Arlen to a many who Liverpool were linked with earlier in the summer. And um, yeah, I think he would bring what, Liverpool needs right now, which is going back to the sort of basics, uh, a ball winning midfielder who establishes control in the middle of the park. And uh, he's not bad at progressing the ball either. And he's good in possession and uh, still very young. So definitely fits the FSG profile. Yeah, that's an interesting comment here. Does Lima have any similarities to Chua? Many bit odd for Klopp to change the profile of the player he wanted. You mentioned Kone there. That would kind of be more aligned to, as you say, what Chua many could have brought. I think so. I mean, Lima is decent at, at winning the ball and in terms of his interceptions, but uh, I think Kone is definitely more similar to Chua many um, than than Lima for sure. Yeah, Croxley's got back in touch. As he thinks Fabian Ruiz would be an ideal signing, but maybe price prohibitive. He was being spoken about in a number of gossip columns at the beginning of the summer with a move to the Premier League, but doesn't look as though that one's happening. And Kumar says, what about Florian Neuhaus? Of course, last summer, there was lots of noises around him and, and he liked Kone at Gladbach. Yeah, I mean, with Ruiz, I think he's gone to PSG now, so that's definitely yeah. off the table. Um, with him, 
again, I think Liverpool need a ball-winning midfielder and Ruiz is, is not necessarily that. He's more of a creative type, but Liverpool already have uh, those sort of attacking midfielders like Elliot, um, Fabio Caballo, maybe not necessarily the creative type, but he is the goal-scoring type and he can play at the tip of that uh, Liverpool midfield, so not necessarily... Uh, and Ruiz is not necessarily the profile that Liverpool needs. Uh, Neuhaus, I can see uh, why people would mention him because reportedly Klopp is a fan or was a fan before, but I think he has sort of stagnated in his progression and uh, uh, it, it's been Kone who's been standing out at Mockengladbach and not Neuhaus. And, and again, uh, he's a good all-round midfielder, but not necessarily, I think, the ball winner that Liverpool needs. We've already mentioned Ruben Neves today. I'm going to put this comment on screen. I just mentioned him because, as you speak about Kona there, of needing a, a, a ball winning, defensive minded midfield player. Is there not also kind of an argument that actually the next midfielder, in, 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 in my opinion anyway, you might disagree, could do with being kind of a hybrid player who could either deputise for Fabinho or equally kind of fit in when Thiago's not there to be that kind of deep ball progressor? And to be honest, Ruben Neves would would tick those boxes. I know a few people have kind of issue, an issue maybe around how nimble he is and his mobility, but equally, he has proven a very adept player at, at Premier League level for a number of years now. Yeah, I, I think he is someone who could probably do both roles. And I think that's the type of profile that Liverpool will look, will look for. Too many was the same. He could play the number eight and the number six. And I think it, it's a it's a rare profile in uh, modern football, but I think those are the type of players that Liverpool will will be keeping an eye on in uh, the very short time that's left of the window. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, a final one then comes in from, from Kumar, says Nat Phillips should join Bournemouth. I believe a few days ago, both Matip and Kanate were returning to regular training sessions. Matip is back in training, one of a, a few players to have returned, still waiting Kanate and, and Diogo Jota to, to come back into to full training. But with Seth Vandenberg looking to go, can you see can you see a, a possibility of Phillips being allowed to move on as well? I can't see it. Um I think Liverpool will still be cautious. The you know the, the memory of uh the 2020 21 season is still fresh in the minds and uh with the track record of both Konate and Gomez and and even Matip, uh, their injury track record, uh, Liverpool will not want to risk uh, having to promote another player from the academy again. So I think Phillips will stay as um, insurance. Yeah, yeah, go along with that. We'll have to wait and see exactly how it does play out. Of course, two more days left of the transfer window. Liverpool taking on Newcastle United tomorrow before Thursday is transfer deadline day. Will the will the Reds make a move? We will keep you abreast of all developments here on the Blood Red channel. My thanks goes to Ben Botchak and to you in the chat box for joining us this morning. But here on Transfer Daily for today, that's all we've time for. Until next time, bye for now. <laughs>